first things f first, I'd like to apologize for the <laughs> terrible quality. It's just, uh, I'm on a bed. Uh, I'm really high up. I didn't want to kill my arms. I know I'm always flexing my professional camera equipment, but that shit is heavy as fuck, boys. So uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be doing this one with my cell phone, and then I'll try to figure something out for the next one. So I apologize in advance. Uh, this might be shaky. This might be all over the place, but I really wanted to show off my entire collection. So here's a quick overview of what that looks like. Um, I haven't really gotten a lot of new Italian stuff, but I've gotten a few since last year. And I'll start with, my, and I reorganize the whole thing. So the first ones, the first part of this collection is uh, by director. And of course it starts with Lucio Fulci, my personal favorite Italian director. And we'll start off with his earliest film that I have, uh, Beatrice Cenci, which is a 68 film and it's a f it's incredible. I love this movie. It's really a more uh, a, a a drama more than a horror or thriller, and it's this um, this historic film about a, a family that um, kind of went against the church. Uh, so it's really it's it's really more of a drama, not your typical um, what you think of when you think of Lucio Fulci, but it does get pretty violent towards the end. It kind of has this. Um, this um this mark of the devil vibe which is still pr it's still violent but it's not like uh his 80s stuff and we'll keep on go sorry this one's a bit sticky <laughs> uh the brute and the beast a spaghetti western by lucio fulci I think it's one of his earliest one, and this is a pretty cool release. Uh, I love this artwork. The film is pretty good too, but not as good as probably his uh, most uh, notable spaghetti western, Four of the Apocalypse, which is again in this very Fulci style of excessive violence, gore, and it's uh, pretty fucking great. And it stars uh, actors that I don't really remember, but I haven't watched this in a while. I should. Rewatch it, or this should get a Blu-ray release. This is the old, like, vintage Anchor Bay release. Well, vintage, early, <laughs> early Anchor Bay release. Now we're getting into his Giallos, which I do love. I love his uh, gi Gialli, sorry, that's the um, phone. So yes, Lucio Fulci's Gialli, and I'll start with this awesome release by Air of Deo. A, two, uh, a double feature of Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, which was directed by Sergio Martino, and Lucio Fulci's The Black Cat. This uh, is an awesome box, little box set. I do prefer Sir uh, Martino's film um, in this per, uh, this particular occasion, but Black Cat is it's pretty good too. It's pretty fun. Now moving on, my favorite Fulci Giallo, and that's Don't Torture a Duckling. Holy shit, is this movie awesome! I had the chance to uh, a couple of years ago to catch it on the big screen, and I do not regret it one bit. It's uh, it's it's really good, and it stars uh, Baba Boucher, which she uh, looks very hot, and she also gets naked a lot. Well, once or twice, I don't know. I watched rewatched it recently, and it's still uh, the, it's still. I'm always fascinated every time I watch it. This one is more in the um, style that Fulci would got to be known. A kind of atmospheric, uh, surrealist, weird film, but still in the uh, giallo uh, genre, Lizard in a Woman's Skin. I do really like this movie. I haven't watched it a lot. I should rewatch it probably another time because uh, I forgot a bunch of st stuff and it's pretty like wild and out there, so you yeah, know, it's hard to follow. Another one of his early film, well, early giallo, the psychic. Again, another one, great film. This is this is not the best release, but it's still pretty good. Now we're getting into his more known titles, and this is a VHS. Yes, I do. I now I mix up VHS DVDs and Blu-rays. I used to separate them, but now I you know I put them together. I think it looks good. It looks more like a, an old like well an old an old video store that had Blu-ray, so not a. <laughs> a super old video star, but Lucio Fulci's Zombie. That's the um, 
Anchor Bay Collector's Edition VHS. It's widescreen. It looks good for VHS. Honestly, this is probably one of the better looking VHS that I own. Of course, on Blu-ray, Zombie Flesh Eaters, the Arrow uh, video release. Uh, great. I waited way too long to get a Blu-ray of this, and um, Blue, um, Blue Underground put out this awesome, like, three-disc edition I just didn't catch. I didn't buy any of those, because back in that time I didn't really have the money, and I kind of regret it, because I also need to upgrade uh, <laughs> the New York Ripper, and yeah, but Zombie Flesh Eaters. The French DVD for the Beyond L'Au-Delà, I also have a giant French poster for the Beyond, and of course the Beyond is, as you can figure out by the three copies I own, it's one of, it's my favorite Fulci film, I would say. It's fun to watch, like, um, uh, different dubs. Uh, French dubs are always so fucking awful. The Beyond, probably the best release if you're looking for a, a the better release of the Beyond, it would go with the Grindhouse. Um, triple disc edition with the soundtrack and the special feature Blu-ray disc. This is great. Plus, it glows in the dark. This was the definite edition before Grand, uh, Grand House releasing uh, came out with theirs. Uh, this is the Arrow... Um, uh, how do they call it? Window box set. And I decided to... Because you have multiple uh, cover options and I decided to go with the Thai, the Thai poster. So I have Thai, English, and French, which the French obviously have the more gruesome cover with the little red-headed girl getting shot in the face. And continuing the um, Doors of Death trilogy, here's House by the Cemetery, which was the first Fulci film I saw. I was like 12 or 13, just got into horror films and decided to pirate it. Uh, but now I own two copies, one on the cheap DVD that's um, that's hidden somewhere, storage. And finally, for the uh, Gates of Hell trilogies, The Gates of Hell, with the alternate title City of the Living Dead. I just, I prefer this. This is like the, v, I think, the American VHS cover, and it's such an awesome cover, such an awesome title. City of the Living Dead kind of sounds like, eh, sounds typical. Contraband, uh, Fulci's um, Politsky something uh, or other um, entry, and with a lenticular cover. This shameless release is pretty cool. Would be better if we had a Blu-ray, but hey, what can I say? And this, I always switch between this and the Beyond as my favorite uh, Fulci film. I also have a ginormous um, French poster for this. The New York Ripper, so sleazy, so fucking violent, so reprehensible, but so awesome. I love this movie. Uh, Cat in the Brain, not my favorite Fulci. Now we're getting into the, the meh section. Murder Rock. I haven't seen it yet, so this might be awesome. The Devil's Honey, other than saxophone sex scene, I don't really remember anything. And it's a nine, uh, late 80s or 90s, I don't know, I'll take a look. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's an, uh, it's a, oh no, it's the 86, but it has that, you know, cheap Italian film 90s aesthetic. I don't know if you follow me. Voices from Beyond, <laughs> watched five minutes of this and turned it off and I haven't tried to rewatch it since. Uh, I don't know, I just, uh, I don't know. This is his latest film that I own and honestly it's it's good, it's good. It's a little old Shriek Show release. Not bad, not, not, not terrible, not great, but not bad, you know, it, it's okay. Now we're getting into Dario Argento, oh yes, his main, and Suspiria in my top 25 horror movies of all time. If you haven't seen Suspiria yet, what are you doing? Don't call yourself a horror fan. No, I don't like the gatekeeping attitude, but really good movie, really highly recommended. I tried to watch the remake, I not. Like, the original is so colorful, and then the remake's like dull as shit, and I, I talk a lot. This video is gonna be way too fucking long. Uh, Deep Red, 
another Argento classic. Um, highly recommend another one of those. Uh, if you're if you're a big horror fan, uh, it's probably his best, like Giallo. That's because some people call Suspiria Giallo. I don't classify Suspiria as a Giallo, but this is his best Giallo. Tenebre, fun fucking movie. This this is another one of my favorite from. Our friend Argento. Phenomena? I haven't watched it yet. Inferno, kind of a sequel to Suspiria. Not as good, not as bad. Uh, n uh, not as good, not bad. I, I like it. I don't remember the English title for this. <laughs> Il Gato a Nove Code. I think it's. Uh, uh, wow. The Cat O' Nine Tell. Yeah, Cat O' Nine Tell. Great little giallo. Now, the big, the grandfather of the Italian giallo, Mario Bava. But before that, a um, anthology, um, gothic horror tale. Love Black Sunday. Love, love, love me some Black Sunday. The first, technically, giallo, Evil Eye. Also, The Girl Who Knew Too Much, which is the American cut of Evil Eye. Watch Evil Eye. Just always watch the international cut that it's intended to be seen as. Black Sabbath. Now I'm kind of confused if Black Sunday or Black Sabbath is the anthology film. It's still badass. Plus, it's, you know, inspired um, one of the world's greatest band name. Black Sabbath. Well, it didn't inspire them, it's something. How can you not love a movie that's called Black Sabbath? Come on, guys. The Whip and the Body, more a, not really a giallo, more of a gothic horror tale. Great. Kill Baby Kill. When I got this, I was so excited because this is like one of these movies that I, when I got into horror, I always watched a trailer on like these Grindhouse trailer compilations or these Grindhouse trailers on YouTube and I was fascinated by it. Finally got to watch it and it blew my mind. Fucking love that movie. Bloodbath, also known as Friday the 13th, part two. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of known to be uh, the proto slasher that inspired um, the Friday the 13th franchise the most. By inspired, I mean they, they took a couple of kills from that. Ooh, dropped it. It's fine, it's fine. That DVD got a lot of abuse. Blood and Black Lace. Uh, I would classify this as the giallo that started the old giallo um, phenomena in uh, Italy. Because uh, uh, the evil eye, yeah, it's, it started the, um, the cliches and everything, but this really like put everything together. Hatchet for the Honeymoon. Good, good film. Five Dolls for an August Moon, probably my least favorite um, Mario Bava film. It kind of felt like... Mario Bava was copying Mario Bava, but it has Edwidge Fenich, which is always good. Mario Bava's more, um, most exploitive film, and a really a good one. I really, really enjoy it. It's uh, Rabbit Dogs, also known as Kidnapped. Honestly, it's for Mario Bava, it's pretty, uh, pretty exploitive. Now we're getting into a son, the devil fish. <laughs> It's exactly what you think it uh, it is. Demons, love demons. Demons too, love demons too. They're the same movie, so if you like love one, you probably you'll probably love the other one. Oh, Black Spider, a redneck, a revenge film. We don't have enough of those, especially Italian ones. Even though this is one of those movies that tries to be American. Now we're getting into Martino. Yes, Martino. Love Martino. All the Colors of the Dark with George Hilton, Edwidge Fenich. I love this movie. This is an atmospheric, surreal, great, great giallo. Torso. Another one I was obsessed as a, as a young boy getting into horror. Love that trailer. Again, the way beat my expectations. The Strange Vice of Mrs. Worths. Uh, I haven't seen this one yet. Uh, don't know the English title for this one. Arrow should really keep like 
just putting the English titles on their goddamn releases. Is this um, what have they done to Solange? Because if it's what have they done to Solange, it's a great movie. Fucking love. Uh, I think it is because I don't... Oh, no, I know what have you done to Solange is over there. I don't remember what this movie is. The English title. Too lazy to look at it. Uh, the Violent Professional, Sergio Martino's Poliziecki film. Great, great one. Uh, great movie. We're getting into the um, Umberto Lenzi, my boy. Umberto. And let's start with its poli with his Politzki movie. The Tough Ones. Oh, great release by Grindhouse releasing. Great movie. Just great. Oh, I love this movie. It's probably my, fer uh, my favorite Politzki movie. Something like that movie. Almost Human. It, I think this like took a lot of stuff from the tough ones, like a lot of recycled footage. Uh, Umberto Lenzi's um, getting into his giallos, uh, Spasmo. I don't know. Uh, did I watch this? I don't know. I watched this, Seven Blood Stained Orchids, a great movie. Eaten Alive uh, is first cannibal, oh, sorry for that, is first cannibal movie. Fun, fun little movie, but nothing beats Cannibal Ferox, come on guys, this is, this and Cannibal Holocaust are the cannibal movies to end all cannibal movies. Nightmare City, fun movie, but holy shit, that ending ruins everything. Nightmare Beach, this is another one of those Italian movies that tries to be American, and it shows and it's hilarious, but I love it, it's a fun little movie. Stage Fright, we're getting into the Suave films and another one of my favorite directors. I don't have a lot of his movies, but every one that I do own, I love them. This is a giallo, but more... Uh, no, this is more of a slasher. Uh, it's great. De la Morte de la Mort, aka The Cemetery Man. If you don't like this movie, what what are you doing on this channel? Like, this is probably one of my favorite movies ever. The Sect, again, Michael Suave, just great movies after great movies. The Sect, uh, what can I say, it's fucking awesome, and that cover is perfect. The Church, La Chiesa, another one, great movie, holy shit, Michael Suave, just great movies after great movies. Sorry guys, I got to move, because my, uh, my arm's starting to hurt, I don't know if you can see it by the shaking. Machine Gun McCain, uh, not great. <laughs> uh, I think this is my, yeah, this is my Enzo, en Enzo G. Cascarelli section. The Inglorious Bastards, great, great World War II movie. Street Law, I haven't seen it yet. It's a Poliziecki movie, but I, I heard that Enzo G. Cascarelli was pretty good at those. I'm gonna... Rest my arm on my shelves. Uh, the New Barbarian, post-apocalyptic Mad Max ripoff by Enzo G. Cascarelli. Love it. Now we're getting into uh, my boy, Ruggero Diodato. So some people might cringe at this section because he, he directed Cannibal Holocaust and Cannibal Holocaust, an evil film. Waves of Lust, a giallo, I think. I haven't seen it this yet. I should, because, you know, the cover is very enticing. I wonder why. Live like a cop, die like a man. That is the most Diodato of Poliziecki movies ever. Jungle Holocaust. Not Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust. This is the best release ever of this movie. This is such an amazing release. And I know I was making fun of you guys earlier, but I do, when I watch this movie, I do watch the cut without the animal violence, because I, what the fuck, I'm not a serial killer. killer. <laughs> but I do, like, if there's all of these cannibal movies have um, animal cruelty in them, but if I have the option, like, this release to not watch it, I won't. Cut and Run, this got a Blu-ray release. I should probably get that Blu-ray release if it's still in print. Huh, fun movie, I don't know. 
I don't know if it's worth upgrading upgrading because I didn't really love it but I didn't hate it I don't know we'll see house on the edge of the park and the last house on massacre street more of these houses movies uh yeah House on the Edge of the Park is great. It's basically Italian uh, Last House on the Left, even though I have uh, <laughs> a lot of those. But this would be the closest uh, to the real deal, mainly because it stars David Hess. And it's, honestly, it's way more fucked up than Last House on uh, the Left because this doesn't have stupid, bumbling idiot cops. And Last House on Massacre Street is a pretty good, like, uh, PG-13 thr thriller. Finally, we're getting into, no, finally, God, there's more, but we're getting into the trash now with um, my boy Joe D'Amato and Bruno Mattei. Start with Emmanuel in America. If you've seen it, you've seen it, and I don't need to talk about it. This is an actually, like, artistic um, Joe D'Amato film. So much different than what he usually does that he used his real name, which is something Italian. Uh, I don't know if they say it on the back. Ar Ar Aristide Masachesi. That's, apparently that's his real name. Or I might be getting the two confused, but I'm pretty sure that's his real name. Uh, Anthropophagus, um, this and um, Beyond the Darkness are probably my two favorite Joe D'Amato films that are not Emmanuel films, because I do have a, um, how do you say it with, um, by saying, staying polite, um, a hard-on <laughs> for uh, Laura Gemser, so of course I'm more, uh, you know. Speaking of which, Emmanuel and the Last Cannibal World. And The Last Cannibals. Um, so you mix a Emmanuel film with a cannibal film. And you get it. You get the perfect movie. This is the perfect movie. Fuck Citizen Kane. This is the perfect movie. Beyond the Darkness. But what can I say? I, I own a poster of this. I love this movie. It's so fucking fucked up. Oh, I love this movie. It's so disgusting. Like, the, the scene where they eat... Disgusting. Now we're getting into um, Bruno Mattei, and I did a Bruno Mattei series on my French channel, so if you speak French, go check that out. Women's Prison Massacre. I do have this on Blu-ray, I think, from Scream Factory, but I keep the original DVD, because this also includes Caged a Woman. A terrible transfer of Caged Woman, but a transfer nonetheless. And I just love this. I just love this. Um, this cover, this, this release in general. And it stars Laura Gemser, of course. This is not an Emmanuel film, but it's also known as probably Emmanuel and Jill or something stupid like that. My favorite Bruno Mattei film, SS Girls. It's so sleazy. Like, you thought, like, Nazi exploitation couldn't get sleazier. This proves you wrong. This is fucking great. Nazi Pope, come on. Robo War, one of his action movies starring Rep Brown, and yes, this is a bootleg, because as you can see, this is pixelated as shit. Uh, but good movie. And uh, fun movie, not good. Same thing for Strike Commando. Again, I think these two, yeah, these two have uh, Severin Blu ray releases, but I'm not. Not jumping on those, first of all, Severin doesn't really sell their stuff on uh, Amazon anymore, even though I bought one of their DVDs recently. Uh, but I don't think they have Strike Commando and Robo War. Fun movies, like, I think I prefer Strike Commando over Robo War. Shocking Dark, aka Terminator 2. Fun movie. I love this one. It's. Uh, I met Goretta Goretta and she talked about this in a panel and that was entertaining. Speaking of Goretta Goretta, Hell of the Living Dead and Rats. Hell of the Living Dead is fun, cheesy, terrible Italian filmmaking, but it runs for way too long. I always skip like the middle part, um, which I think is all stock footage from another movie. And Rats, Night of Terror, fun fun-ass movie again. 
Uh, this is another bootleg, but this is a late uh, Giallo film in the sense that this was made in the 90s and it's directed by Bruno Mattei. Yes, a 90s Giallo film. 30 years too late, my man. Speaking of Giallos, now we're pretty much like all directors, all everything. Uh, Death Walks at Midnight, Midnight, good Giallo film. Death Walks on High Heels, uh, I prefer this one. Yeah, this one's good. Again, with my Italian titles, I can never... I think this is the fifth chord. Yeah, Franco Nero, so this is the fifth chord. Great little flick, I love this Giallo. It's good. So yes, the fifth chord. I remembered this one. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I don't remember a lot because like these three films, I think I saw them once and I usually watch my movies at least twice. Uh, so if I only watch it once, I don't remember everything. And the movie I started talking about earlier that I thought this was, <laughs> which I don't know why because it was in the Sergio Martino section, so the other one's probably a Sergio Martino film. What have you done to Solange? This it would be my favorite um, atypical giallo film. Uh, like, uh, not in the sense with the uh, weird paranormal atmospheric horror, just straight up giallo. This is probably my favorite, and uh, honestly, anyone who's into giallo or even horror should watch this. Like, of all the gialli I own, this is the one I would recommend the most, because uh, it's great. This is one of the sleaziest, this and the New York Ripper. Uh, uh, the New York Ripper I consider more a slasher. This is a trashy-ass Giallo. One of the trashiest. This and, this and Giallo in Venice. Uh, two of the trashiest Giallos. But fun one nonetheless. Liguana della Linga de Ri di Fuoco. I think it's uh, the Iguana, blah, 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 fire. Uh, good, good Jallo. Like all the Jallos I have are pretty much good. I don't really own any bad Jallos. These two I haven't watched yet because I just got them in the um, Easter Carnage shell. The Red Queen kills seven time, and the night Evelyn came out of her grade a grave. I started watching this one, and I felt like watching um, uh, Don't Torture a Duckling again. <laughs> Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eye, really fun, really good Jello, and this one is directed by Antoni M. M. Dawson, which I don't think that's his real name, because that doesn't sound really Italian, but fun, fun one, fun one. This one too, this is one of the first uh, giallos that I owned. The Forbidden Photos of the Lady Above Suspicion. And I got this just because it was cheap. It was back in the day when HMV was still open. I didn't have a job, so uh, I was really young, like maybe 15, 16. So this being like 10 bucks, jumped on it and loved it. I in the Labyrinth, I haven't seen it yet. Horror triple feature, and this should be with my Mario Bava's, uh, with my Lamberto Bava, because I think, other than Shock, these two are Lamberto Bava uh, films. And Shock, I think, is, uh, yeah, that's Mario Bava, it's written right there. Um, I've only seen A Blade in the Dark. It's really good, I don't know why I haven't seen the other ones. That might be the movies I watch after this. Speaking of giallos, more giallos, triple feature, The Blunt Stained Shadows, Short Night of Glass Dolls, and Who Saw Her Died. Don't you love giallo titles? <laughs> but I haven't seen any of these. I should really get to these two um, two sets there. They, they seem to have really good movies. Klaus Kinski in Slaughter Hotel. Um, I don't remember if I saw this. I think I... Uh, no, I haven't seen this yet. I think this is more of a giallo mix with a poliziecki. That's why uh, we're getting into the poliziecki. And I keep pronouncing that word wrong. If you're Italian and you're watching this, I'm sorry. This is not really a poliziecki film. But I put it there because it's a crime film. In Italian crime film. Teenage Prostitution Racket. Um, apparently a real problem in Italy at the time. This is a movie about that, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. The title makes it sound 
illegal, but uh, it's pretty good. Hitchhike, okay, this, yeah, it's not really a politic either, but it's, uh, it's, it's in the same vein as uh, Mario Bava's um, Rabbit Dogs. Starring Franco Nero and David Hess. It's again one of these um, inspired by Last House on the Left film and another one of David Hess. So it's fun. David Hess is one of my favorite actors. Every time he plays a role, he, he goes into it. Oh, wrong way. Oh, no, the right way. Caliber 9, The Italian Connection, The Boss, Rulers of the City. I've seen Caliber 9, I've seen The Italian Collection, I've seen The Boss. All great movies, and this is the Fernando Di Leo um, box set, uh, part one. This is the first one. They did a second one, which I should get. We're getting into the spaghetti westerns. These from, you know, the spaghetti westerns. Django, prepare a coffin. Good movie, good movie. A Pistol for Ringo and The Return of Ringo. Not my favorites, but still fun. Again, most all the um, Spaghetti Westerns film I own are good, just like the Giallo. Probably one of my favorite, Day of Anger. The Grand Duel and Kiyoma. Kiyoma staring, of course, Franco Nero as a native, getting revenge. And The Grand Duel starring the great Lee Van Cleef. The original Django, another one of my favorites. Killer Caliber 32 and Killer Adios. I think I've only saw Killer Caliber 32 and it was pretty good from what I remember, but typical spaghetti westerns, you know. Sometimes they, they do get repetitive. A lot of them have the same plot points. The Good, the Bad, the Ugly, of course, Sergio, uh, Sergio Leone. The anthology of the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, the, well, the man with no name, so Fistful of Dollar for a few dollars more, the good, the bad, the ugly, and Duck You Sucker, a Fistful of Dynamite, and the a cheap little 12 pack of, um, of uh, Spaghetti Westerns, from what I remember, a uh, few good ones, a few, definitely a few good ones. I think there's one directed by Lucio Fulcher. That might be in another, like, little box. Uh, not box it, but D cheap DVD pack. Now we're getting into the, uh, <laughs> the shit. Okay, guys, this. Forget the classiness of the Giallos. Forget Dario Argento. Forget the Bavas. Forget even the classiness of Spaghetti Westerns or Poliziecki movie. This is the shit. And of course, a section of pure shit wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be better without Night Killer, also known as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. What does it have to do with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3? Absolutely nothing. This is a Claudio Fergasso joint. A terrible movie, but this is one of those so bad it's good, like so terrible it's good. Like honestly, I would put that way past Troll 2. Like, close to the room, kind of bad, good. Paganini Horror by Lucio Cozy, Cozy. Now, some people might be offended that this is in the shit pile, but it's terrible. It's not a good movie. Troll 2, another Claudio Fergasso joint. Uh, everyone knows Troll 2, everyone knows it's terrible. I don't find it as so bad it's good as a lot of people. I find it terribly tedious and boring. Unlike Burial Grounds, Knights of Terror, which everyone knows this by this point. A fun little discovery. A, that's why I love Severin. Like, this is a unknown film at all. Like, I didn't know what this was before buying it. And I highly recommend it to anybody that's into um, depraved, sleazy cinema. Beleth, the demon of incest. Come on, it's called Beleth, the demon of incest. Killer Crocodile 1 and 2. Um, Jaws ripoffs. Not great, but funny, fun as shit. Beyond, beyond the Dark, the Door, sorry, not the Darkness, that's another movie. Uh, beyond the Door. Uh, Italian uh, Exorcist ripoff. 
terribly fun. I love this movie. This, honestly, this is one of the last, like, so bad it's good movie that I discovered, and it's worth every minute. This is Last House on the Beach, another Last House on the Left ripoff. I love this one. It's, it's, uh, yes, it's, 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 it's rough. And this is Last House on the Left, but on a train. <laughs> See what I did there, guys? Night Train Murders. Uh, again, this is just Last House on the left. <laughs> you know where it goes, you know where it ends. Killer Nun. Nunsploitation films are boring. This is no exception. Flavia the Heretic, another nunsploitation. I haven't seen it yet because my experience with nunsploitation is not good. Now we're getting into the woman in prison slash Nazi exploitation. This is not even an Italian movie. Why do I have this here? Right in a woman's prison. This is this shouldn't be here. Uh, or this shouldn't be here. I think both of these don't deserve to be here because I don't think they're Italian. No, SSL camp is Italian. No, it's not. No, it's not. What? What are they doing here? I'm gonna put them in my Euro trash as soon as I'm done. Oh no, right in a woman's prison is Italian. I either way, I haven't seen both of that. Uh, no, SS, SSL camp is great. It's the beast in heat. Fucking amazing movie. Erotic war. Deported women of the SS special section. I ordered Gestapo's last orgy. I got this. I want to. I. I. I didn't ask for a refund because honestly, they're both probably like similar. And this is a fun ass <laughs> Nazi exploitation film. Contamination. Another Luigi Cozy film that's in the shit pile. Because you know, it's not great. Now the zombie movie, Zombie 3. Now we, we're off the shit pile and now we're just like in the zombie movies. And Zombie 3. At least it's not Zombie 4. Zombie 4. At least it's not Zombie 5. Zombie 5. This movie is terrible. <laughs> Zombie Holocaust is a great mix of an Italian zombie movie and an Italian... Um, um, cannibal movie. I have to get that Dr. MD uh, Blu-ray that's ever in release. Three um, features. Other L, which is Bruno Mattei's worst movie, and that's saying a lot. Black Demons and Demons 3, The Ogre, I haven't seen yet. Psycho Killer, I own both of these on Blu-ray, but I'm keeping this DVD for Delirium. Shockumentary feature, um, Africa, Blood and Guts, Goodbye Uncle Tom and the Godfather of Mundo. I haven't watched any of these. I, uh, sorry, I've watched Goodbye Uncle Tom, but I have a separate DVD of Goodbye Uncle Tom. And it's honestly for a Mondo film, it's pretty good. Black Cobra Woman, which got a Blu-ray release, I think, by Code Red, and Super Bitch. Now, of course, Black Cobra Woman I only bought because of Laura Gemser, and it's an official, unofficial Emmanuel film. Speaking of which, Emmanuel, Queen of the Desert. Ah, I like it. It's 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 your typical Emmanuel film, and I think it's unofficial too. Hercules, haven't seen it. The Tenth Victim is a classy sci-fi um, film that's in the style of the most dangerous game. And Nightmare Castle is a atmospheric black and white gothic horror. And here, I'm not gonna pull them out, but here's some VHS, The Nun Official um, Wizard and uh, House of Exorcism by Mario Bava and Hitler Reincarné, uh, Caligula Reincarné à Hitler. Uh, which is um, Gestapo's last orgy, but in French. This is fun fact. This is my most expensive um, VHS tape. So that's the Italian collection, guys. Next up, it'll be the Scream Factory, Trauma, and of course, uh, Vinegar Syndrome. See you guys. Oops, sorry. See you guys next time.